Um, I've been lost at sea once, which was a pretty shitty day, I you must say. You got lost at sea? Yeah. What happened? About two, two years ago. Um, I was in Mexico, and I was with friends. And Fucking Mexico. I was, I, was, I was so angry. I hated <laughs> the guy so badly. What happened? So I jump in the water with a friend of mine. I've never spearfished before, and... We're, we're in the water. and Your friend never spearfished No, no, before. he never did anything. He's just like, oh, I want to look around and see what you're doing. And then I see the How boat. How deep is the water? It's pretty deep. Well, you can't see the bottom. And then the, bo- the boats start going like further and further and further and further and further. And my friend is like, oh, what's going on? I'm like, nothing, nothing. And I'm like, okay, we're going to start swimming from the shore right now. For the shore. Yeah, for the shore. So start swimming. It was like, it, it would have been durable. It was like, I don't know, maybe a good like five miles maybe the it, fucking shore was five it was miles far. away it was far it was like i would have done it it was definitely been after dark when i <laughs> reached the shore so i'm trying not to panic my heart is like pounding in my chest i can feel it like in my boat? throat it's drifting away drifting away Wait, for no reason and so who, I'm like, who was in charge of the boat uh, the, the captain that we hired that was american actually what do you do? Just start drinking and not paying attention to you? I, oh, wait. <laughs> and then we were stuck, so I told my friend, okay, let's swim. We swam for about an hour, an hour and a half. Oh, my God. And then a boat passes by. So I started screaming and yelling, and I had my buoy. Luckily, I was swimming it. And it passed next to me, and they wave at me, like, hi. I'm like, no, 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 I'm like, help, help, help. I go completely nuts. And then the boat stops. And they pick us up, and I try to explain and my completely inexistent Spanish that we've been stranding at sea. And it, so I'm like, um, the boat is like right there, super far away. And they drop us to the boat. The guy is asking me for money. I'm like, I'm lost at sea in my wetsuit. <laughs> Do you think I'm carrying The guy like, who took you to the boat is asking you for money? No, the, the guy, guy, picked the guy you up? that picked me up is was asking, asking me for money. for money, for a tip, for rescuing me in the middle of the ocean. I was like, sorry, I don't have a tip in my panties right now, but thank you for saving my life. And then you drop us to the boat, and then we get to the boat, and the guy's like, oh, I didn't put enough gas in the boat. Oops. I'm like, what? <laughs> so he ran out of gas. He ran out of gas. So you were, he would never be able to get you? Never. Holy shit. It was so bad. And then we managed to, the Coast Guard came, and they tried to tow the boat, and he started telling the, the Coast Guard to, like, go screw themselves because... Because oh, I don't want to pay for this. You're a bunch of assholes. I'm like, can oh you stop god. talking right now? <laughs> oh, my God. And you literally insulted them so badly the Coast Guard left. Did they take you with them? No. I was still on the boat. Oh, my god. With my god. friends that were drinking, not really understanding what was going on. They were like, why are you so mad? I'm like, just just keep drinking. So how'd you get back? And then he managed to find full reception. He called the cousin of his wife, his neighbor of this and that to come tow him. He arrived like about an hour and a half later. I got back to shore, and the guy's like, oh, so what time are we going tomorrow? I'm like, screw you. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm never going to see you again. What time are we going tomorrow? What a fucking delusional It was asshole. so bad. And then we get <laughs> to the car. I know you almost died, and I left you in the ocean, and I didn't have any gas, and I told the Coast Guard to go fuck off. Exactly. I'm like, I'm never seeing you ever again. And we get to the car, and my, my friend is like, oh, I give him like $100 in chip. Is that enough? I'm like, you did what? <laughs> you did what now? <laughs> and... Oh. <laughs> My hair is like, and wow. uh, yeah, so, so it was, it was, yeah. That was is that the scariest thing that's ever happened to you in the water, besides the tiger shark? Yeah, definitely, for sure. It was. It was, was there was, anything else like that? That really freaked me out. That should freak you out. Five miles is a long way to swim, especially if you don't swim distance all the time. Did you have any flotation device or anything? I had one buoy about that big, and we were two. I was more scared because it was about like 4.35, so the sun was getting down really quickly. You wouldn't be able to see where the shore is. No. Not, I mean, with the Fuck. lights, yes. But it's more, I was more freaked about like Tide, sharks or sharks, things like that when it's everything. dark. and it's Fuck, 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 fuck. So I, I had moments <laughs> in spearfishing that was a little bit freaky. I also had a blackout. You had a blackout? Last year. So Underwater? Yeah, yeah, that's the biggest danger of spearfishing is actually blacking out. It's not sharks. It's not getting bitten by anything. Underwater? So basically what happens is that you dive down and then when you come to the surface, if you stay too long, um, you, your lungs on your way to the surface are going to expand back. And then your residual volume of air that you have left in your, in your lungs becomes really, really small. So then the percentage becomes too low and then you pass the out. The what becomes too low? The percentage. 
but percentage oh, okay. word, of oxygen in your lungs become too small and then you just pass out. So basically your brain shuts down to make sure that a lack of oxygen is not creating any permanent damages. Oh, what a shitty it's system. Actually, it's actually kind of smart. <laughs> not in that time. But then that's what happens with people is that when it comes back up, if your buddy is not watching you, and that's why spearfishing is a team sport, if they're not watching you, if you pass out in the water. What if they pass out too? You're going to sink right down. You're both doing it at the same time. Well, Has normally, well, the, the good system to dive is one person dives at the bottom, the person is watching the other one. Oh, okay. And then it's one up, one down, one up, one down. Oh. And then you, you, you watch each other's back. Is that what happened with you? Yeah, I was actually very lucky. Um, the, the guy that was diving with me um, lost his brother a few years before to a blackout. So he was ex- Jesus he Christ. was looking at me very, very closely. And I was I was beyond grateful to see his face at the surface. I knew it. I knew it was going to blackout. So. How did you know you were going to blackout? Because it was, I dove down and I was aiming at a fish. It was pretty deep. I was at like 85 feet. And I aimed for a fish. It was in a pole spear too. It was in a gun. And I missed it. And I started chasing it in the water, and then I missed it again. I was like, God damn it. And then I realized, I was like, whoa, I'm actually pretty deep, and I'm, I've been there for quite a while. So I started panicking a little bit. So when you panic, you let air even more, which is completely stupid. And then I start finning, finning, finning. And then you have, um, you start doing. Uh, finning? Sorry? Finning. 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 Yes, yeah, finning. Um, finning, uh, when we have, you wear fins? Mm hmm. Oh, kicking. So you finning. You're kicking, trying yeah, you're to kicking, get yeah. to the surface fast? Yeah, exactly. And then what happens first before you black out is you have a loss of motor control. So I could start feel I could feel like my body making like weird movements, and then I knew that I was out of oxygen, and then I knew that I would probably most probably going to pass out. Wow! And then I came back, I came back, and then I saw that my friend was watching, and I was like, oh, I really hope you're really watching. I hope you're really watching. And he grabbed me, and then he woke me up, and it was. How far were you from the surface when you blacked out? I blacked out of the surface. Oh, at the surface. Yes, which is why it's called a shallow water blackout, because even if you're in deeper water, it most of the time happens at the surface. So when you got to the surface, what did he have to do to wake you up? Uh, you have to take the mask off. You have to t- keep the head off the water, and then you have to blow in the eyes because you have a high concentration of nerves. You slap a little bit, not too hard. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Call then... the person's name, and then you normally wake up pretty pretty fast unless you wow. inhale water. What did you, was it like you had a dream? Like if you get choked out, like one of the things that happens when you get choked out is you wake up, it's like you were dreaming. Like what? Whoa, I was at a disco. I saw some, (laughs) (laughs) like I was riding my skateboard. Like it's weird. I've never been choked out to the point of passing out. Um, I would imagine similar though. Luckily for me. (laughs) But yeah, I I missed out like in a few, a few minutes and I just wasn't sure what was going on. And then you just, you just done for the day when it happens, but. Yeah, you have to be done, huh? It's yeah, for the the risk of getting another one the same day is actually very high. Wow. So once you shut off, you get shut off again. Yeah, so you have to wait at least the following day to get back in the did water. Did you jump back in the next day? I think I did. It was the day after. I really want to go back in the water as soon as possible. Just to jump back on the horse? Yeah. So yeah. at night I was a little bit stressed out and my friend gave me some kratom and it was fun. Oh. That stuff. <laughs> That's I, I used to think that stuff, that Kratom, was, um, I, I didn't think it was a drug. I thought it was a, a mild stimulant. I heard that people take it for pain. But I, f- I thought that when they're taking it for pain, that they're not getting high. They're just taking it and it alleviates pain, like Advil or something like that. And then I took, I think I took eight of them, eight or ten, which is a lot. Because I know Chris Bell takes like ten Oh, but it's like, day. it's a pill. Yeah. Oh, okay, I took it in powder mixed with like. Juice yeah, or this is just the powder in pill form. And I was high as fuck. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Now I know why people are nervous about this stuff. I mean, do you ever do you get approached by sharks? In the Bahamas, yeah. In the Bahamas, yeah. they're pretty much always there. There's a guy who just got bit in Texas. He got bit by a bull shark, and now he has flesh eating bacteria that's destroying his leg. Apparently, oh. there's flesh-eating bacteria in the water. We don't need to Google that. It's pretty. That's a bad day. Pretty disgusting. I got pretty bad encounters with sharks. Yeah, what happened? My worst one was in Tampa. Actually, something super easy. It was in 15 feet of water, and that's actually the dangerous spearfishing. Is when you start getting cocky, 
and you say like, oh, water's shallow, it's fine, we don't have to watch each other, everybody's doing their own thing, which is really bad. Definitely never do this. <laughs> yeah. I got my lesson break time. And I was I shot a little fish, so I clip it to the back of my gun, and then this tiger shark come in. And I'm like, ooh, tiger shark. <laughs> They're a little bit, they can be. They're aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're not the nicest one you want to, you want to show up. And then it was a juni- juvenile one. It was still a good, like, seven feet long. Seven, yeah, about seven feet long. But it was young. And the youngs are really the one that you don't trust. The big old sharks, you know, they're wiser. They know. They check you out and things like that. But the young ones are the ones that are a little bit crazy. So they're going to go more towards you and they're going to go try to, do like curious bites, which is mo- mo- what happens most of the time with shark bites. It's a curious bite. And so the, the, the shark is in front of me and he's charging me with his mouth open. So I, with my gun, I'm, I'm, I'm poking it. I'm Whoa. poking like the eyes, I'm poking the gills, I'm poking the nose, I'm trying to poke everything that's going to hurt him as much as I can. And I'm not very strong, especially in the water. So I'm really trying to like bang this freaking gun as much as hard as I could in his face. And he, he doesn't back down. He keeps, like, circling, and he keeps coming in for me. Whoa. And at some point, I'm like, okay, like, something, I, I'm going to have to shoot it, hoping that, that you know, I'm not going to miss. <laughs> because if I miss, then it's the only thing between me and the shark. So and you're, then, you're poking it with the tip. Yeah, I'm just poking <clears> it with the tip. And then you roll his eyes back. Oh. Which is when they, they're, biting. They, they're, ready, they're ready to bite. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm dying. And I'm like, okay, well, whatever, you know. So I'm like... I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to aim and try to see if I can shoot it. And then my friend arrived. He's like, oh, I heard you screaming. What's up? Do you have a fish? I'm like, uh, there's a tiger shy behind you, buddy. And he's like, oh, crap. He was like, a, my friend Felix from Montreal is like a 17-year-old at the time. And he never rarely spearfished. It was his first time he was seeing a shark. I promised his parents I would bring him back in one piece. Oh, I'm Jesus. like, I'm like, okay, I'm like, don't panic. Everything is fine. How deep is the water? Like 15 feet of water, it was so shallow. So I'm like, put your back against mine and then cover your half. And if he comes too close, just poke it. And the shark came in a couple of times. And then because we were two, he was like, eh, whatever. And he just left. He didn't like Oof. that, that he was outnumbered. And I'm like, wow. So when I was alone with the shark, I was screaming in the water. And I was like calling my friends for help. And then nobody could hear me. And then we went back to the boat. If you, if you scream under the water, how far away can people hear you? Not not too not 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 too far. <laughs> Ten feet, fifteen feet. So well, it depends on the wave again and the winds and everything mm-hmm. like that. But nobody could definitely hear me. Then when I get get back on the boat, my friend, I see my friend swimming towards the boat, and he screams, "Tiger shark!" I'm like, "No shit, you dumbass!" I've been like screaming for your help for the past half an hour. And then you get to the boat, and we left, and the shark was like circling. It was like, ooh, Ugh. that was really scary. But in that situation, again, if I had shot the shark. To, to save myself, it's I would have got the worst publicity ever. It's, it's, I, I just, that's when one of the things I don't happen? understand. When did that happen where was, sharks became something that are protected in the public eye? Because was it the governor of New York that killed that shark when he was uh, fishing? Someone, was the governor, the mayor, one of those guys, was, uh, was, Sport fishing caught a shark, and who was it? The governor? Yeah, Cuomo. Cuomo. Very so, common in the states, shark fishing. Well, they're edible. I've had Mako shark in restaurants before, but something happened. Something changed, and I think it was when there was all this awareness about um, shark fin soup. Yeah, there it is, Andrew Cuomo. Yes. He caught a 154 pound thresher shark, and everybody freaked the fuck well, out. It's when, it's when they realized that, that the Asians were catching millions a day to mm-hmm. make sh- to make uh, shark, fin, shark soup. fin soup. Yeah, so it became instead of it being something that was just another fish, then it became something that's protected. And people with a very shallow understanding of what a shark is were freaking out about it. Yeah, exactly. It's it's the Asians ruining it for everybody else. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> How dare you? Be careful today. Let's <laughs> <Can't> say that. <laughs> Especially with crazy rich Asians, number one in the box <laughs> office. Um